So welcome to Bunny's Designs. Uh, this is a live stream uh, with live people in chat and um, recorded for Ustream.tv and also YouTube to watch um, at your leisure. And welcome all YouTubers and thank you for subscribing. I'm playing with the chameleon pens. This is going to be probably part three and I'm just going to do a plain flower uh, pattern. It's actually photocopied because I find that the ink doesn't smudge. So I've been holding the um, bubblegum pink for about eight counts. I'm using a smallish petal first because I really would like this to be as pale as possible. And possibly that was too pale. So sometimes you have to take it back. Um, so there will be a small petal somewhere else here. So you just start and you just keep going. And again, now this one was, because I didn't recount, it's gone darker. But it's okay, I can live with that. I did want it paler, but it's fine. So it's got a little bit fluffy, that end, because it's a brush tip. But you just push it to there and count. So welcome everybody to Bunny's Design. Hope everybody's um, with us. Hi, Sarah. Uh, anybody else I've missed? Welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm having a bit of a play. There's a very slight hint of pink there. Um, but this is a bigger, uh, a bigger petal. So we need to go around this side and then I'm actually going to do it separately. I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to do that one. And now I'm going to do this one because this one is behind it. I do apologise, grumpy pants. Uh, I think we're putting the things back into the attic. Um, so grumpy pants is a bit grumpy, so I do apologise in advance. <laughs> so again, you start across here, and if you go all the way across, you get a beautiful pink flower. Um, let me try that with the green. Um, my daughter uses the bullet end more than she uses the brush end, so it's okay. Push that onto there. I apologise in advance for the patter of tiny feet. I'm going to hold that for about eight seconds. I'll show you what the leaves do. It's very, very fast. You only want one pen with ten different shades in it, and it depends how pale you want it. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see just how quick it is. Again, we want it on fairly pale. And the brush tip is, it's a little bit fluffy, shall we say, but you know, it's, I've used it quite a lot. So you want to be in that comfortable position so that the arc of your hand is just going in this nice, movement because it's the smoothness of the movement that stops all the lines appearing so again once you start you can't stop you just keep going and you get the most wonderful shades from palest to darkest greens depending on how big your leaf is so that was a real natural highlight now this one will be the same if not darker and I really love that, you know, there's no blending, that's it, you've done it. So if anybody's got any questions, now this one's underneath, so I want a little bit, uh, I want it a little bit darker because it's below the other leaves. So again, you start to think about shadows, highlights, low lights, uh, where a flower would be in real life. And then this one will be paler because it's over the top. And I do apologise, I'm going to murder a puppy. So, <laughs> he's always the same. As soon as I press that record button, it's always the same. 
So again, we start here and we can work across. And the trick is to keep going and make sure that the lines do not dry before you cross them again. And you can get the most beautiful shades of green. I'll do um, um, what color? I'll do a blue rose because there's something magical about the blue one. So again, I take the brush tip off and I pull that one on and then just gently push it gently and count. See so if anybody's got any questions. Um, but again, these are humongous. <laughs> Bends. but with arthritis they are so easy to use and you're not using 10 pens for each shade you're just using one so how I do these um, let's see if I can do these little blue flowers so again start on the outside I start on the outside um, and just stroke a little bit of color in these may be a little bit too small Um, which this will be a dark one. I'll probably do the bonnet end, I think, on this one. Some of them want replacing, I think, the nibs. But you get refillable nibs and you get inks to refill them as well, so that's quite good. No, oh, I've got the wrong blue, I wanted the violet blue. I do, I do a violet blue rose. But they are really easy to work. They just are a little bit expensive. Um, but again, if you start with a pale colour and just stroke in, you can get the palest colour. Or if you're doing a, a different flower, you can start pale and get the really dark, vivid blue colour. And this is the bullet end. Uh, and then you just push them together. Um, this is the very dark blue. I'm just trying to think of the purple. I think this one. So I'll show you how I do the flowers. And it's quite good because you're supposed to put them away when you've, <laughs> when you've finished with them. So again, gently push that. Oops. Take, take the nib off and gently push it so they just kiss and then count. So I think we'll do about six. Because I think I'd like, and I always do a test, so of course that's quite, see that's going to go from that colour right down. So there wasn't a lot of colour on this. I'm actually not going to use the brush tip. Because it's a smaller space, I'm going to use the bullet end. Because I want a lot of control when I'm using these spaces here. So it's a good idea to, to start with one that would be fairly dark. Always just test. So what I'm going to do with this one is start here and just stroke down. And then I kind of, I'm a bit naughty, I know things are going to be quite dark so I kind of just stroke them in a bit and then count um, once you've done one or two of these shapes, you know how many to count. So we start here and stroke all the way across. You've got lovely pale highlight going down into there. And then you count some more. And if it's a bigger space, then you count more. So if we're going to do this big one, that might have been four or five. This is going to be about 10. And again, it depends how pale you want it. So you start here and you look, stop. You just keep going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And that gives you a lovely highlight all the way down to the bottom. There is a little bit of lineage there because it's the bullet end. Whereas if you use the brush end, like I did on this leaf, 
you can't see any lines. But you get better. So again, a bit of a test. I'm actually going to work backwards. I'm working downwards this time. <coughs> the faster you go, <coughs> the nicer the colour. Sorry, I've started coughing now. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, I really want to kind of get all this light first and then <coughs> Oh, excuse me, there is a, <coughs> a few of these videos from earlier before I got my nice camera but you can actually see how I do them Excuse me. Start coughing now. I'm sorry, once I start to cough. So again, you start here, just work your way around. <coughs> and then you might want a darker area. I mean, there's no reason why <coughs> you have to use them like this, but um, I quite like them. So they do they do lend themselves to be quite good. <coughs> Goodness gracious me. It doesn't take you long at all to get a really nice effect. <coughs> oh, sorry. And it's uh, it's so nice to be quick and easy. Anything that's easy, that's fine for me. And if you go down to 20 and you've got a rather large space, then you're going to have a really pale flower. <clears throat> I prefer the brush tip, I have to say. I do prefer the brush tip. But you get used to it because you can see the lines on this. Whereas when you use the brush tip, you can't. But if you're faster, you can't see the lines. It's just I'm a bit slow. You can get some really nice, deep, really deep colours and they are beautiful colours in themselves <clears throat> so this is the true colour and this is the, the paler colour um, so there are some really nice colours um, and again, there's this, this one here. Yeah, 
I don't like the bullet end quite as much. It's okay for filling in, but it's not. Um, you don't get that lovely, beautiful blend. So I'll start another one. I've done quite a few of these. Um, I did have them handy so that I could uh, I could show, but it doesn't take you long. I say I'm a bit out of practice because she's had these pens at college. <clears throat> The idea is not to kind of stop, you just keep going. So you can get the deepest and the palest colours out. So I think you probably get 20 colours, but they say about 10, but it depends on how you use them. So you can get some really nice rich colours. <coughs> And you just keep moving things, oops, moving things across and counting and deciding, you know, how deep you want the colours. Oh dear me, for goodness sake. So, um, and there's some really, really, really gorgeous colours. This is one of my favourites, um, but as I say, I've only used them a couple of times. Let me see if I can find. Let's see if I can just find these uh, right here. I'm just going to stop counting because otherwise I will damage the the pen. But this is an, a lovely shade. Is this this one? Just start and just got these vivid orange colours. They're just really, really gorgeous colours. Um, but I think I've, I've done one very similar to this. Let me have a look. That was the. <clears throat> This was the very first one that I did. I'll just zoom out and you can see. So I'm actually a lot worse than I was, but <laughs> so I haven't practiced for a while. So that's my first attempt. So that was my first attempt. Um, I think that was my second attempt. And this is a photocopy paper. This is the actual book which it ruined. Um, and after a while you get used to how to count to get the, the colours you like. Um, mm. Yes, I had picked, I had done this one before. That's about my fourth attempt. I think that was my 
third attempt. And they really are the most really, really nice colours. Um, I think this one's got nearly every colour on it, if I, think, if I remember rightly. This is the whole colour range of the, the 20 colours. And then I did that one. No, I didn't. I think I did that one next. That was my next one. And I really like that. And I actually managed to get a little bit of a highlight on her as well. And then I did that one and that one. And then my daughter took them to unit. <laughs> so I was getting slightly better, but I quite like that one. You can get some quite nice effects. Um, if I sort my light out, that probably would be better. And again, a highlight on the... You start with light, go that way, and start with light and go that way, and you get your highlight in the middle. Um, I don't think I did two different colours. Again, highlight that way down, highlight that way down. Um, I don't think I did two different colours on here, but I did practice. I did practice on something of different colours. Uh, but I really enjoyed them. Really enjoyed how, how wonderful you got your colours. Um, and again, there's greens, there's a red, a green. Uh, so all the reds are from the red pen, all the oranges are from the orange pen, all the yellows are from the yellow pen, um, and then there's um, a, a warm sunset, um, a summer sun, which is the bright yellow one, uh, bubblegum pink, that's a really nice one, is bubblegum pink, and then there's a, two purples and there's two blues, there's three blues actually. And then there's blues and greens and olives. So really enjoyed these colours. This is the pale blue, but you can get a deeper blue. But I love the fact that you've got, you know, there's three pens there. All that colouring and three pens. And one blend straight in, in one I mean I, th that was because I just wanted the tips and then I wanted this to be paler so you can play with the light so when you're doing a rose all the lights coming one way or it's coming down really enjoyed playing with these colors uh, but this was my first attempt so this one I didn't count enough this one I counted too much but by the time I worked around this one and round here I finished, I think, on the blue one here. So this is with the least mistakes. But I started to think about sh shadows and the bigger the, the bigger the leaf or the less pink I wanted it or less shade I wanted. And once you get to that stage, then you 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 know you you know what you're doing. Um, I'm just a bit out of practice. Um, but um, it doesn't take you long it doesn't take you long and you can replace you get about I think you get about six or seven nibs to replace them and you can also have um, replaceable inks so you know I thought this pack there's a pack of 52 pens if I bought one bottle of ink every week I would have the full lot of ink in a year and they probably would dry out so I'll just pick the colours that I use the most and the black the black and the um, the colour that I use and the grey because I've only used those twice then I would buy those the last um, again on here it would be nice to do uh, but you don't have to use them you can use them as an ordinary marker if you really wanted to I mean, there's no reason why you have to use them and I just thought it would be fun to, to use them on here. So this is a Kirby Roseanne. And I've already coloured this in professional watercolours. 
that. So I'll have a quick go on here. Give you the bizarre cave that. Yeah, they are a bit special. <laughs> but again, you, you can re. Now then, do I want the highlight on the top or the highlight on the bottom? So you can draw down there to there. And then you've got a little bit of a highlight on your toadstool. Um, and again, I'm getting more used to doing using them on these. Uh, on these really small spaces. So that's quite nice. Just the tiniest little bit of a highlight on there. And if you left it for a count of 20, then you could get a really lovely pale red with just a dark red edge if you really wanted. Or even the smaller one. So you've just got to count differently. So again, um, this is very pale. The idea is you just have to keep going. You can't stop. You've got to be as fast as you can not to get any lines because you want to try and get the next lot of 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 colour into the other one before it dries, then you don't get any lines. Um, I think I'm going to just put a very dark edge on here. Or I could have put a very pale one actually, depending if you're thinking about reality or not. And I've actually gone through, because I didn't use my rule, did I, of using a piece of photocopy paper behind. So, again, I've got a very pale one here. Stroke down. Until we just go into there. And again, it's a, if you're working with these pens, it's very fast. I did like the dragonfly that I did on the Kirby Rosanne. I really like that. So I could possibly continue working in there if I could find it. probably can't find it. So again I've got this big one. So you could do this one in stages you see. You could start here and then you just follow it round. You're trying to go a little bit faster if you can. And then when you get to here you've already got to your darkest. So you know you can just relax and just fill it out as you want. So I've got the squeaky. Um, there's so many different ways you can use these pens. This is the bullet end, so this isn't the soft end. And again, if you turn that round, <coughs> you might want another highlight onto this ridge here. Oops. Onto there. I'll highlight coming this way because you've got the light here. In which case that would be in dark and that would be a, hi a highlight. So again, unfortunately, you do have to keep turning it round. Again, you can kind of make that magic colour. And it's only a subtle sh change, but you can just notice it. And that what's, that's what makes them that slightly bit, slightly different. So we think the bunnies could be a fawn colour maybe, or bark. Possibly bark, I think. Um, so again, with the bunnies, you start, oopsie. Um, start with a very pale bit here. And then you touch the darker bit. So, 
and this you can just start stroking that into there and then you want some darker bits Oops, let's find one there, some darker bits and you want some, about five should do that one, two, three, four, five um, and you can just tie, turn that into there and you've got a lovely highlight into that and you want another one, two, three, four, five. Again, the tail is, and the foot is then going to just go into that. <clears throat> About six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you've got a bit of a highlight there and there. And then that's darker. And that's all you're doing is just stroking in colour. Uh, so we'll do another six. One, two, three, four, five. And we can do that ear quite pale and do that ear, but then inside it's going to want a highlight. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, a highlight around there, darker, I mean you can do this a lot slower than I am, just really roughly doing it, one, two, three, four, again, uh, here, shoulder, straight down there, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one kind of wants a bit of a highlight going on there. And I actually like the darker on underneath the tummy. And then you can kind of just put that in here, put that into there. And so you've got the bunny. So that's one bunny, and then <clears throat> um, just forgot. We've got some quite nice leaves. The trick is just to have a play. You've got to have a play with these pens because they are new and they react differently. I'm just going to stroke in all these really pale ones. And then I can go back and count again and finish off the pale. Or you can start one way and work all the way around. You don't have to do them like this. I just find it a little bit easier. So then you can go all the way across the top. And you can trim those in there. <clears throat> and then you can kind of put the darker ones in there. And then when it gets down here, it's going to be very dark. We've got lots of highlights on there. And the mushroom.
the mushrooms oh I've done that the mushroom is um fawn colour so again the brush tip now this is probably one I haven't used quite a lot so the brush tip is almost perfect so <clears throat> it's not been used So I think they deserve that there. And then um, <clears throat> how I would do that is you can pull out certain ones. And then you can count again. Yes, you can do them fairly fast, and I, I like them as well. But I, I like the fact that you're not taking 10 pen tops off to do 10 colours. Um, so I can really just kind of get a really nice effect there. And I want to take that one down to darker. <clears throat> so then you can do each one if you want so you can do pale to dark pale to dark and then put some more colour on do pale Dark. And then by the time it gets down here it's going to be quite quite dark so you can kind of do this <coughs> the right way up and you can stroke the colour in and then you know if you want to give it a bit more shadow and stroke in a bit more colour if you want. So you want a shadow down one side. There's all sorts of things you can do. You can really, really play. Um, I mean, the other thing you can do with this one this is probably slightly better than that one. <clears throat> Just kind of have that colour out of there and then kind of see it come to its darkest with a natural highlight. Turn the other one the other way up but you could get the other one as well. So you've got a real natural highlight going on. And again, that one would be like this. To prove that it's kind of... So when you turn that round, you've got a real natural highlight under there. Um, and the same with this, you know, it's, it's dark, isn't it? One's dark. And they are fairly fast. It doesn't take you long at all. By the time you've carried that up to there, you've got to the darkest colour. You've got a lovely highlight. I mean, that's very roughly done. I've never done this before. I've just had a play this afternoon. 
so it doesn't take you long you just have to rethink and because I'd never used markers before I hadn't you know I didn't have any expectations of what to do um, so you can have it quite pale in the there or you can have it lighter going to darker and then you can just put a little bit of shadow in there and then these can just be kind of drawn down have a natural shadow across there and just push them back together there you go <clears throat> really have to do it that cool if you don't want. I just can't find Hermione that I was playing. <laughs> I can't find the one I was playing with earlier. Quickly, this and then, as I say, my <clears throat> but I would always suggest doing it on a photocopy because they will go through your books. So let's take bark and let's take the bullet and the brush end, and we'll count to. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh yes, they do. They do bleed through. That's what happens to your colour book, and that's what happens to a photocopy. That's why I say never do them on a book. Never ever do them on a book. It's an alcohol ink pen. So a quick test, and then what you can do is, you know, you want this highlight. You can take that down or you can take that one up and that's not what I intended to do at all. <laughs> <clears throat> Take this highlight and you can take it down and then you have to count again and then you take the highlight back up and that gives you that lovely highlight. Again, you start in the middle of the highlight and work down, middle of the highlight and work up. So again, you've got to be comfortable. Uh, quick test, and then you want to start here and work up. Now, I've ruined this because I didn't put the highlight in the same place. But it's a practice. Um, and again, you can start there and go all the way down till we get to Hermione's darker colour. So you've moved the highlight. If you have that light that way, the highlight's that way. If it's that way, it's that way. So again, I can have this highlight coming down. I didn't quite get, I didn't quite get the brush tip to the end. So I can start that way and work down. We can darker highlight in there if we want to. So that's how you do the hair. 
Um, these pens are, let me find my little piece of paper. They are ordinary marker pens. They are ink, I forgot what I call them now. I've forgotten what I call them, just bear with me two seconds while I put this away. lost a little piece of paper with it on. It's not far away, but it's because everything slides off my desk. I have to be a bit careful where I put everything. pens and <clears throat> that's what I'm looking for. Oh for goodness sake I'm gonna have to just think about this desk. Oh. They are called they are permanent alcohol ink pen system and they are called chameleon colour tones and that's what your little pen set looks like when it's sitting upright. And you basically have one pen with a blendable chamber and you can get 10 shades out of it. So I bought them for my daughter for doing graphics and she's doing illustration so that she can carry potentially 200 pens in here. I tell a lie, she's got 200 colours. And, and it just folds down on the desk. It doesn't normally slide, but it's my desk. Um, and then you shut it up and you're to go, good to go. And they are pretty amazing pens. They're very quick, they're very easy, and they're eight and, eight and a half inches long, so they're very chunky. They're over nearly eight and three quarters, they're a quarter, nearly a quarter of an inch thick, more than half an inch. So if you've got arthritis, you could actually get hold of them and, and just twist the tops off. So they're very easy to use. Um, and it's uh, you can replace. They have a Japanese brush nib at one end and a Japanese bullet nib at the other end. You can replace the nibs and you can buy the inks to refill the pens. So they are totally... Um, that's the blending chamber. So they are totally um, uh, reusable. You know, they'll last you forever. So my plan is to buy the inks one a week and then after 52 I will have the full set. That's if I could afford the pens <laughs> because they've now brought a 52 set out. But I think it's about £180. These were about 80 79 something um, so they're not cheap but you do have a lot of pens and as I say my daughter can take these to uni she can take them home again put them in her bag and she's got potentially 200 colours which has got to be pretty good um, so I think they're pretty amazing and if you've got arthritis it's brilliant because you've just got your pen set in front of you and you can use these. I can't use markers. I can't blend and I can't use markers, but I can use these pens. So I'll just have a look and thank you for watching. I'll just have a look and joining me uh, today, which is day after Boxing Day, I think, are we? I think so. Uh, no, it isn't the day after Boxing Day, is it? Yes, it is. I hate Christmas because I always forget what day it is. Um, so thank you for joining me and um, I need to go see what the monsters are doing um, and I need to, to, to manage a, a little bit of something to eat so again you know you can do all sorts 
and once you've done a photocopy practice you know that's the bleed through have to have it on an extra piece of paper and then have to have an extra piece I do two because it normally goes through the first one it doesn't go through the second one but I use two just to be on the safe side um, but again you will ruin your page and some colour books bleed so a photocopy doesn't normally bleed so that it's the best of both worlds so you can I could colour this and I could stick it in my book um, next to the other one that I was colouring with, with Hermione on it Has anybody got any questions? I'd say they are a little bit expensive but you do get um, a little sachet with spare nibs so and you can buy spare nibs as well and you can also fill the chambers up with with um, the chambers are quite long so you've got your your mixing chamber with your uh, toning medium in and then you've got your color ink and at this end you've got uh, refillable high quality alcohol based inks so the inks refillable the nibs are replaceable and the color mixing chamber toning medium is refillable so as long as you look after the chambers the big fat pens they'll last you forever and I think that's wonderful as a tight Yorkshire lass that's my kind of thing <laughs> but unfortunately they're going to disappear after the six and I won't be playing with them anymore because they're going back to university with my daughter because she needed some um, some pens so they're fab for artists uh, students for art students because potentially they've got 200 colors in here 200 shades and they just slide that up and lift it up and sit it on the desk and the colors are just ready to pull out use and then slide back in again so they are pretty amazing it's just the initial cost is is a little bit steep shall we say but I mean if you look after them they will last forever as I say, if you buy if you buy uh, one pot of ink, I think they're about six or seven pounds maybe. So if you buy one pot of ink every week and you have the fifty two set, then within the year you will have um, you will have a set that will last you a lifetime. I would think you're not going to use a whole pot of ink sometime soon. I've done about thirty pages. I don't know how many my daughter's done. Um, one or two of the brush pens are kind of fluffy but they are supposed to be like that uh, some of them have never been used uh, and I don't know how rough she's been with them so you know there's, there's always that possibility um, but they are definitely pretty amazing and that's what gave me my idea of having um, 10 shades for every colour that I have in my little colouring book so when I, although I have five, six hundred colours here, if you say that there are ten shades, at least ten shades in every colour, I've got nearly six thousand colours here. And it was the chameleon pen that gave me that idea of doing that. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope everybody's well and enjoy the rest of your Christmas holidays. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen whether I'll be taken out shopping or not but if I'm not <laughs> if I'm not um, I think you can buy the pens singularly as well but you know the, the set of 52 is the new one that just brought out uh, but go on the website and have a look at their website because um, they show you how to do fur how to do skin tones how to do all sorts how to blend them how to blend them together how to mix colors they show you how to do everything there's quite a lot of videos about um, so do have a look on their website and uh, thank you for watching <laughs>